Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today I have a very exciting lesson. Today we're going to get back into a little bit of PlayFab and talk about PlayFab Cloud Scripts and more specifically Q Triggers. And one of the main reasons why I'm so excited about this lesson is there's virtually no documentation out there on how to use Q Triggers for PlayFab, except for one very long video which is hard to follow because the audio wasn't recorded very well. Now the first thing that we need to understand is the difference between an HTTP trigger and a Q Trigger. PlayFab and Azure provide both of these options. Now in most of your scenarios, you're gonna be using HTTP triggers, which is your typical cloud script with PlayFab. These work by the player sending a request to run the cloud script. The cloud script will execute on the Azure servers and then return a response. A queue trigger is a little different in that it doesn't execute as soon as the request is sent. Instead, the request is sent to a queue, and then once the server has an available CPU, it'll execute your function. There's also a difference in that there's no response returned to the player. The main benefit in using a queue trigger instead of an HTTP trigger is that HTTP triggers have a timeout limit, which is, I believe, 4.5 seconds. And so if your cloud script takes more than that time to execute, it'll just fail. Whereas with a queue trigger, because all of the requests are stored in a queue and they don't have to return a response, these functions can take more time to execute. Now, an example from my own projects where I've used a queue trigger is in our My Crypto Games app. With this app, each of our players will have virtual currency and our app requires us to have the total virtual currency in circulation. To get this value, we have to iterate through all of our players to get their virtual currency balance, and we add that to a single variable, which we then save to PlayFab. Now, previously, I was using an HTTP trigger to do this, and it was working for a period of time, but once our player base got a little bigger, that function would end up taking more than 4.5 seconds, and it would just fail. That's when I decided to look into Q triggers, and I had to figure it out pretty much all by myself. But once I did, it fixed the issue, and my function was able to execute all the way through without timing out. So now that you know the difference between an HTTP trigger and a Q trigger, let's get into the how it's done. To get started, you're going to need to have your Visual Studio Code environment set up for creating Azure functions and deploying them to your Azure account. I've already done this and there's quite a bit of documentation already out there on how to do this, but in the future I'll put out my own tutorial on setting this up. First thing that we'll do is we'll go down to our workspace window and we'll click the plus sign next to workspace. We'll then select create function after which we need to pick the type of function that we want to create. And we're going to be using an Azure queue storage trigger. We then need to give our function a name and I'm gonna call mine total bucks queue. After which we need to give our function a namespace and I'm just gonna use the same namespace that I've been using. We can then select create new local app settings and we're going to create a new storage account. We'll need to give our storage account a name and I'm gonna call it total bucks storage. For the resource group, I'm just gonna select the same one that I've been using, after which we can pick our server location and I'm just gonna select East US. Then we need to set the path within our storage account. This will be for the binding between our function and the queue. So I'm gonna call this queue for total bucks. After all this, Visual Studio Code will create our queue function. Now if I put this script side by side with my old script, I'll be able to show you how to convert from an HTTP trigger to a queue function. The first thing that I'll do is I'll select all my code inside my old function and I'll paste it into the new function. Now we'll be receiving a couple errors in our new function because we need to include some namespaces and bring over some variables. The first namespace that we need to bring over is the newtonsoft.json namespace. This will fix our JSON convert error. And then I need to bring over the playfab.servermodel namespace. This will fix the error that I'm getting for get player in segment request. Now to fix the errors in our function for wherever we have await, I need to add async to my function. The next error that I'm getting in my function is for the request parameter. This is a parameter that's created whenever you create an HTTP function, but instead for the queue function, we have this myQueueItem parameter. And what we can do is we can replace the request parameter inside this deserialize object function with the myQueueItem parameter. This is basically all the information that is sent to our function about our game. So like you would parse the request parameter to get the context values in an HTTP function, we're parsing this myQueueItem to get the same values. Next up, there's some variables in my old function that I'm just using for this function that I need to bring over. And those are the continuation string and my total variable. 
And the next thing that we need to do is delete all of our return values. So I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'll delete this if and else statement. And the last thing that we need to do is this is a void function, but it actually needs to be a task function. And so I'll replace void with task with the capital T. And task is not recognized because we need to add another namespace. And this is just using system.threading.tasks. Now that's everything that we need to do to convert this function over to a queue function. And so now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this function. Once our function is finished deploying, we can go to our PlayFab console. And in the automation section under Cloud Scripts, we're going to want to register a new function. And in here, we'll want to change our trigger type to be Q. For the function name, I'm just going to call it Total Bucks Q. For the Q name, we're going to need to go over to our Azure dashboard. And if we go to Storage Accounts, and we click on our new account that should have been created when we deployed our new Q function, we'll scroll down to Q. We'll need to add a new Q, so I'll click the plus sign. And for the name of this Q, we want to give it the same name that we were using within our function. And that is for me the queue for total block string, which can be found right here. So we'll copy this, we'll go back to Azure, we'll paste it in and press OK. We can then go back to our PlayFab dashboard and paste it in for the queue name. For the connection string, we need to go back to the Azure console and we need to select the access key section. Under here, you should be able to see that you have a key one and a key two with a key value and a connection string value. I'm gonna copy my key one connection string so I'll reveal it and then I'll press the copy button. We can then go back to our PlayFab dashboard and we'll paste it into the connection string field. After which we can click register function. Now I want this function to execute on a schedule. So I'm going to go to the scheduled task section. And in here I already have a scheduled task created for this function. I just need to change it to this new queue function. And then I'll click save. Now if I select my scheduled task and I click run, you can see that this function is now in progress. And if I refresh it, you can see now it says succeeded. If we go back to our Azure console and we select the queue section again, we can click on the queue that we created. And in here you can see that there's a message, but there's a problem in that it's not triggering our function to take this message and execute it. You'll know that that's happening if the message in your queue eventually disappears. But currently this message is not going anywhere. The reason why this is happening is that there's a possibility that when you deploy your function, the binding configuration between your function and the queue did not get pushed. And I was able to find forms talking about this where it would work locally, but not when deployed. To fix this, it's actually quite simple. All we have to do is go to our function app that we've added this queue function to. And under configuration, we need to add a new application setting. So I'll click the plus button. And to get the name and value, we're going to go back to visual code. And if I go to my file system, you should be able to find this local.setting.json file. And in here, I have this total buck storage underscore storage, and then my connection string. This is the name value pair that we need to add. So I'm going to select the name, copy it. I'll paste it in the name field. Then we'll copy our connection string and paste it into the value field, after which we'll click OK. And then we can click Save. Here we can click continue. And now if I go back to PlayFab and I run my script again, then when we go to our Azure console and queue, you can see that we have no messages. That's because it's already taken those messages and executed them. And when it executes the messages in the queue, it removes them from the queue. Now to make sure that this actually worked and updated that total value on our PlayFab server, here I have my title data already opened. And right here, you can see we have a value of 6,493. But if I refresh this value, now we have a value of 13,653. This was an unknown error for quite a while. But now our My Crypto Games app is updating properly. Now, once again, the main reasons why you would use a Q trigger instead of an HTTP trigger is one, your function takes longer than 4.5 seconds to execute. Two is if you're doing something that doesn't need to be done right away. And three, if you're handling a lot of data or players are sending data that needs to be added together somehow, or players are sending data that needs to be handled in the order that they're received. With HTTP triggers, if multiple people are contributing to the same value and two people call the function at the same time, then there could either be some data loss or priority could be written over by another player. 
Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to use cue triggers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends, anyone that's interested in game development. And subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.